Hello friends, are you familiar with the walkaway dress, the famous dress from the 1950s that advertised that you can start it after breakfast and walk away, wear it out to lunch? Well, we are going to see today how long this actually takes us to make because we are taking part in Stephanie Canada's walkaway dress challenge. Now, of course, I did my usual shtick of trying to fit far too much in on my weekends and worked, d definitely pushed myself at pole class and am subsequently out of spoons. So, the walkaway dress is Butterix printed patterns 6015 from the 50s. It is kind of a wrap dress pattern that was advertised as so easy and quick to put together that you can start it by breakfast and wear it out to lunch by noon. Um, I have suspicions. Uh, we are going to be taking part of that challenge, hopefully. I will be added to a playlist somewhere sometime. Ooh, what else? Uh, we have already made our adjustments to the pattern. Uh, we've only made one adjustment because we only made one mock-up. We don't know if this is actually going to be a appropriate final draft, but a mystery is half the fun. Got the iron out, about to get my pattern weights, then I'll start the timer. This walkaway dress challenge is hosted through Stephanie Canada from Backroom Finds. I just emailed her asking to take part in the challenge and she shared a printable version of this pattern with me via Google Drive. So the pattern was free, yes free, thanks to the gracious generosity of Miss Stephanie Canada at Backroom Finds. Uh, however, I did have to find my way to a FedEx office where I gave them $25 and they gave me an anxiety attack. As far as pre-work for this pattern goes, I made a mock-up and decided I wanted to make a couple of changes. Of course, I got my supplies ready, which included thread. I dyed a cotton satin bed sheet from Goodwill. That was $2.50 for the sheet. $5 for dark green liquid dye, $2.50 for teal powder dye. And the dye job was a little bit patchy, but it led to this cool watercolor effect. So overall, I'm not mad. That makes our supply total $10, let's say 15 for the thrifted buttons. Uh, so with the FedEx, that brings our supply total thus far to $40. I did make my own bias tape for this pattern. I did not count it towards the time allotment though, because the patterns just you already have bias tape made, so it does not actually count. But I will admit that that is a time investment that I put into the pattern. So just needed that to be said somewhere. I made the bias tape from my own dyed fabric because that way the bias tape would be an exact match to the fabric, which seemed necessary with the kind of cool watercolor pooling effect that goes on. But uh, m mostly, honestly, because I hate the feeling of most bias tape, it is way too stiff, way too rough, and I'm justifying it that the satiny tape would be a lot softer and easier to work with for me, and that it would just feel and look a lot better with the ultimate finished drape of the dress. So that is something that I thought that I needed to do for myself. But if you want just the uh, store-bought cotton bias tape and you like using that, that is all you. Okay, about an hour in, I have everything cut out, pinned together, and I'm about to start sewing, but first, potty break. Changes I made to the pattern. Mainly, I had to reshape the shoulders to make them a little bit more straight across than sloped. I brought in the neckline and reshaped the underarms to allow for a bit more room. I should also have taken in the bust dart a little, but that's something that I learned with this draft, not the original one. I also folded the skirt in by two inches on the bottom and the side, somewhat because I liked the length a little bit better for me personally, but mostly because it fit my fabric better. Speaking of fitting my fabric better, I had to add a center back seam for the top back because there was no longer any fold I could cut on. Like most patterns, you start by pinning together all your darts. This pattern had a fun L-shaped dart for the bust and side. You cut down a designated line, sew up the bust dart, and continue on your merry way with all the other darts. Instead of tying off the darts, I am electing to save 30 seconds and fray check my darts instead. After the darts, we sewed the skirt to the back, ironed the seam up, per directions, and pinked the seams to finish. The pattern suggested pinking as one of the ways to finish your seams, and that did seem like the fastest way to me. An hour 45 minutes in, I have both the front and the back attached together at the shoulder seam. Right now, I am finishing the edges for the top of the back and wear it attached to the skirt by pinking it. And I pinked the shoulders as well. Uh, this says to press 
the seam allowance up, so I'm gonna press the seam allowance up. What is my next step? I need to iron everything and then do uh, button placket. That's the thing that I need to or do, no button way. placket. No. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the button placket. So what I did with this button placket was trace a template out on the wrong side of the fabric, then stitched two chunks of fabric right sides together, clipped my corners and turned that sucker inside out. Uh, I poked teeny corners of my thrifted double-sided interfacing to the triangles and ironed that sucker into submission so it was nice and crispy. I straight stitched instead of buttonhole stitched into a rectangle because this iron-on interfacing is no joke. It, it, it is not going to actually fray. I pinned the plackety bit into position so that I could attach my seam binding and the raw edges would be totally encased in seam binding. In the mock-up, I just really did not like the look of the bias tape button loops and decided that I wanted to do a three triangle tabs. So I mapped that out with a three triangle placket would look like and made the pattern piece. Everything is ironed. Now time for seam binding. The pattern called for one quarter inch bias tape, but I hated working with that. So I made mine a half inch. I think it looks better. I am still learning and not 100% used to using bias tape around these kinds of edges. So I definitely improved as I went. I still think the bias tape wasn't stretched enough around the waist, causing it to stick out a bit, but that's something I can improve on in another project or rendition of this particular pattern. You know what, this could turn out badly, but I'm about at this back tab and I'm just gonna put my little elastic up under here Let's see how that goes. The elastic that I used was like a three inch scrap bit of elastic from a different project and it was attached in the same way as the placket. I sewed its edge in under the bias tape and top stitched it to face the right direction. It's blinking cause it's paused about two and a half hours in. I am done with the seam binding on half of the side of the dress. Still need to do the collar, then do the hand stitchiness that is like the buttons and the hook and eyes and ironing down, um, what's it called? The button plackety bit because that, that needs to, that needs to happen too. I should have done that earlier. Why didn't I do that earlier? Oh. Three hours in, I'm going to hand stitch on the buttons and the hook and eyes. I've got silver hook and eyes and gold buttons. It's fine. So I'm going to hand stitch that down. Then I'm going to iron down the button placket and the elastic so it stays nice and crisp. I'm going to put, plug my iron in and add a little bit of interfacing right here so it has something to grip to, you know? I also decided I want to add a little interfacing to where the buttons are going just for like a little bit more structure. So I just cut out a bit of uh, the interfacing to fit uh, and some fabric, ironed that down and hand stitched on the buttons. The last piece was the hem. The pattern had a line two inches away from the end where we were supposed to fold it in. Instead, I marked four inches up and folded to the line and ironed that down. That's just how my brain works. Then I folded the skirt down and ironed so just a little bit of that raw hem was sticking up over the fold. This is so I can follow the directions for the blind hem. Four hours in and, well, a little over four hours in. I think all I need to do next is the blind hem. However, I, I, I barely know how to do a blind hem. So we're, we're gonna figure oy, to the bay. We're, we're going to do something that's Something will be done. I need to select the blind hem stitch on my machine. I need to encase my raw edge in my bias tape and that's what I'm mostly sewing while just ever so often pricking it through the folded bit. Since this was my first time trying the blind hem, it was a struggle to wrap my head around it originally. But after I got the hang of it, it went pretty smoothly. See this little overlappy guy? That's why you keep consistent tension. Cause I screwed up there. Well, this is what it looks like. Lots of puckering there. Maybe it'll look better when I iron it. Yeah, I did not do the basting very well. So the bottom is very warped on the back. We'll see if a good iron helps. Probably not. A good iron can only get you so far. I definitely got better with the blind hemming uh, as I went on. So the latter half, 
of the over skirt is significantly better than the under half, but um, five minutes, 21 seconds. Sorry. So, sorry, five hours, 21 minutes. I'm happy. So once again, my totals are 25 for the pattern and printing, 15 for supplies, and five and a half hours of labor at $20 per hour makes this total project about a $150 dress. All right, Rachel, this one's for you, okay? That's my good arm. We're, we're just gonna deal with the bird, you know it? We're just gonna deal with the bird. Final thoughts, um, I definitely got better with the bias tape as I went along. There are some parts down here that's a little wobbly. Uh, I just need to, I forget to how to do bias tape around curves all the time if I do not use it immediately, but the shoulder's not bad. Uh, this not bad, I feel like around this part, you, you can tell that I was struggling a little bit to remember how bias tape works, but I digress. The, the the material that I used, I did use a bed sheet, but since it is like a satin bed sheet, uh, just the way that the grains work with the cross grain, not sure how well it shows up on camera, but if I look down, this looks like a completely different shade than this, just because of how the cross grain works. It's really cool. It's really like a weird marbling effect as well, because I did not use a big enough pot, but definitely super happy with this outcome. Could I improve? Yes, absolutely. I think the breast dart needs to get a little bit more cinched in, maybe fiddle around with the shoulders a little bit, but overall I am super happy. Do I want to make this pattern again? Absolutely. Do I want to speed run this pattern again? N not anytime soon. So <laughs> if you like this kind of content or have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to list that down below. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon so you know when I actually do post. Like always, stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm. It's very frosty in here. I believe it. It's a freezer.